Hello there, welcome back to the How to Make Minecraft Animation series. I'm Anxious Cynic and this is part two, how to import your Minecraft world. So the first thing we're gonna do is go to our workbench here. We're gonna go down to scenery. All right, so there's a couple different things you can do. There's pre-made assets that are within the Minimator files that you downloaded, and then you have import from world. So first, let's go over this one because you probably have a Minecraft world that you want. So we click that and it brings up this new interface. So first things first, we need a world right here. So if I click this, it brings up the list of worlds that I have. Now, currently, Minimator does not support 1.20.1 as of this recording, so it needs to be a world before that. When you're first opening up Minimator on the little loading screen, it'll tell you what assets it's loading, so just pay attention to that in order to see what versions of Minecraft Minimator currently supports. So, for example, I have this version here. If I click on it, then you'll see when it loads up, uh, there's nothing. So if you're encountering this error, then chances are you're in a Minecraft world save that Minimator does not currently support. So let's pick another world. All right, so here we are in a compatible world. And as you can see, it loads up and we get this nice uh, interactive view here, much better than the previous versions of Minimator. And just like in the main program, you control things the same way you would. You left click to orbit, right click to look around, and WASD, Q and E to go up and down. That's something I forgot to mention in the previous episode. Uh, but we just want to select some stuff here, I guess. So one thing you can do is you can just click and then let go. You don't have to hold it and you just drag around and it will kind of intuitively, context sensitively bring out this box. Click again and it will set the box and you can move your cursor around again and then you can see that these edges highlight, click and hold and drag and you can expand or shrink or whatever you need to do to get the selection where you want it to be, burping. So obviously in order to do this you'll kind of have to move around in your scene and get different angles so that you can select the different parts of your selection there. You also have these like pre-made uh, things here so if I click on small it'll automatically just kind of put a box in the center of the world area here and you know be the size you want you can kind of use this to get a, a general area and then you can adjust it rather than trying to go from scratch the way we did initially so uh we'll just go with this size i feel like that's a pretty okay size here this isn't going over the top so let's go ahead and drag this up boop just like that and I think it's going low enough to where we're not going to have any issues there. So I'll just click import selection. And you'll get this pop-up here that says 24 blocks are found in the terrain that can be animated. So this would be things like doors, maybe fence gates, things like that that can be individually animated. So if you want to have those things where you can animate them in your scene, then you'll click yes. If you don't need them, you can click no and then they won't be animatable. I'm just going to click yes for this example. It generated our world here as you can see. And then we hit create and just like normal it's putting it in the scene i can click and then now we have this world scenery here and i'm just gonna zero that out like so so that we're zeroed out in our scene and as you can see here is our world and i believe the animatable objects are probably here these are levers that i had in this scene if i click on it then you'll see that this uh, can be animated and you'll see that it breaks down in our uh, timelines here and apparently the beds are also animatable so that's kind of cool so obviously as you may have guessed if you didn't select to have these imported as animatable objects then these would all just be clicking on this one block of scenery and you wouldn't have this drop down here none of this would exist which you may want if it's going to slow down your scene too much the more animatable objects there are then the more things it's importing and thus the you know slower the program may run so the less animatable objects you have the smoother the program is going to run so one thing about my animator is you cannot adjust the scenery aside from those animatable objects uh, once it's imported so any of this stuff that you want to do anything with if you didn't want the cactus in here for some reason there's nothing you can do about that this is all just one big model but let's say you want to get rid of these cactus and say you don't have the world you can't get into it in minecraft or maybe you just don't feel like doing that and going in and creative and removing all these cactus well uh, let's go ahead and remove this object from our scene i'm just gonna get rid of it from the library here and then in our resources this is all the assets that you brought into your scene you can see that 
there's that right there. I'm just going to get rid of it so we don't get that option. Uh, because even with it deleted out of the library, when you go to import scenery, if that was still in there, then you would get it in this drop down. So obviously I deleted it and it's not in here, but if that's something you want to do, just because you delete it from your library, as long as it's still in your resources, it's still going to be in your scene and you can recall that anytime you want by uh, creating it as a new scenery. So let's go ahead and import from world again. All right, so here we are back in the world importer again. I'm just going to select our medium selection again and as you can see we are getting those dang old pesky cactus who wants them in their scene especially a desert scene who is like why would you even have cactus in the desert doesn't make any sense so what we can do is go up here to this little cog icon change world settings we're going to click on that we have unload regions far away we can turn that off if we want to maybe there's uh something further away from where your player was when you logged out that you want to get and then you have enable block filter so i'm going to click that and then you'll get this option here so you'll have filter mode to remove and filter mode keep so we want to remove so what i'm going to do is type in cacti cactus right there and we're just going to take this and we hit this little arrow here and it's going to put it over into the filtered blocks section so with that i can close this window and then now you'll see that the cactus are all gone so without going back into minecraft without editing the world we can filter out blocks or as you saw, we can keep blocks instead. So if I turn this to keep and then I close this window, all we get are cactus. And then of course you can add more than just that one block to it. You can add uh, any other types of blocks you want. And here is our scene without the cactus. I can import, we have these. So I'm just gonna actually go ahead and click no on this this time. Create the world, plop it in. Gonna zero it out because I don't want it to be all wacky do. And now you can see our scenery has no cactus and also these are no longer animatable blocks. This is, there's no drop down, it's just in our scene there. So that's pretty much the basics of importing your world. Now, if you wanted to import a Minecraft bedrock world, you would need to convert that to Java. I actually already have a tutorial on that. I'll have a card pop out in the corner right there for you right now. And you can go check that out if you want to play around with trying to convert your bedrock worlds into Java so that you can use them within Minimator. Short of that though, you're not gonna be able to import worlds from bedrock edition so let's say you got your world set up or maybe you don't have a world at all and you want to uh maybe just build one from scratch within my animator or you want to add a little to this one uh something that wasn't in the world already so as you may recall we have these browse option here these browse options singular but plural at the same time click browse and you get this window here for navigating things that come with minimator is pre-built assets so you got rooms you got sets we have a city block a dungeon uh buildings all sorts of things here so you can play around with any of those options but let's just say i want to bring in some nature and let's say maybe we'll do a tree and I want to have, uh, let's see if this would be a big giant oak tree. We're going to open that up right there. You see a tree, bring it in, plop it down. And now we have this perfectly fitting, it doesn't look weird at all, oak tree in our desert scene. So as you can see, that's uh, another way to import scenery, things that are included with Minimator. Of course, you can also just build scenes straight up. So we'll go to block here. We have grass block. Let's say we want to create ground so i'm just gonna bring that in let's actually make these un invisible uninvisible invisible so we got a grass block technically we don't really need this because we have grass ground but maybe we want the the block to go up there so i'm going to go to my project properties go into my library here as you can see let's close that up so library and then you see with the grass block selected here we actually have some additional options down here so if i click repeat and then we have values x y and z so if i click on this it drags it out on the x-axis this one on the y and this one on the z so we can actually use these methods to build within minimator itself you know we don't have to import scenery we can just build it right here in the program so if you don't have any worlds to import or maybe for some reason you just want a custom world maybe you want to be able to uh have some blocks that are rotated so uh, let's go to planks here we're gonna bring in an oak plank 
plop it in there and say we want to build a little house. So we'll go to repeat, expand that out on the X axis, maybe a couple there like that. And uh, so we can just use this. I'm not going to build a house here right now because that's not necessary, but let's say we were going to do that and we wanted to kind of have some weird things that you wouldn't be able to have just right in Minecraft itself. So as you can see, I've got this scene, if you remember from the first episode, where you can have multiple instances of an object in your uh, library put into your, to your timeline. So if I go here, you can see there's a new template, which would basically add in a new object. We have create timeline from template, duplicate template. So I can duplicate it in the uh, library here, or I can just put another instance of it in the timeline. So I'm gonna do that, create timeline from template. And now we have another of the same wall here. So, you know, if I was building a wonky house and I wanted to, you know, have it be kind of weird, kind of needlessly topsy-turvy, I could do that. And then of course I can go down here and duplicate templates. So that's gonna give me two in the library itself. And you can see there's zero instances, meaning there's nothing in the timeline for this object. And this one I may want to adjust to a, a different uh, size and shape and whatnot. So let's actually make it like two on the x-axis. And then we can go to create timeline from template, boop. Now that put in this object which is now different so we had to create a different object in our library in order to adjust the parameters and have it not affect these for instance if i go back to this one and i add on the y you'll see that both of those are affected by those changes because those are both from the same library object so there you go that now we've got three walls and actually this one since it's on the end here should probably be duplicated or repeated on the y-axis so let's go ahead and do that and as you can see that change is reflected right there and this is a very poorly constructed house and we can create all kinds of nifty scenes that uh, you know you wouldn't be able to build this in Minecraft itself all right so that should pretty much do it for all of your scenery needs within my animator if there's any questions you have feel free to leave them in the comments but that's gonna do it for me so thanks for watching I hope it was helpful and I'll see you in the next one